Happening first at 4, a special art exhibit opened on campus today in recognition of World AIDS Day. And find out where you can enjoy a sweet treat tonight while supporting a local nonprofit. That's all coming up next. You're watching KUJH TV Lawrence. KUJH TV News starts now. Good afternoon, I'm David Elliott. And I'm Jay Ingber. Thanks for joining us. For those of you looking for a new place to study during finals week, a unique addition to the Kenneth Spencer Research Library was revealed Tuesday. KUJH TV's Nicole Levin has more. The University of Kansas Library celebrates a new addition to the Spencer Research Library called the Maryland Stockstead Reading Room. Marilyn, a former KU professor, is in attendance and is tonight's guest of honor. University administrators, library friends and benefactors of the community, and many friends and colleagues of Maryland's joined her last night in the grand opening of her reading room. Executive Director of Communications, Advancement and Administration, Rebecca Smith, says the reading room is very different than other KU libraries because of its holdings of special collections with rare and great value. It's also where the Kansas collection is held. That's our regional history depository. So anything related to Kansas history, you can come in and read um, journals of, of pioneers from you know, hundreds of years ago. The unique library edition is a closed stack system, meaning that the stacks are not browsable. Instead of searching for material yourself, it is brought to you, making it different than any other library on campus. Marilyn Stockstad, funder of the library edition, says the room is important because students need to have as many resources available to them as possible. Libraries and museums are both very important to me and I want KU to have the best possible facilities for their students. Marilyn says the reading room's materials are more useful for graduate students and faculty. However, the room is available for the use of all KU students, including undergraduates. Nicole Levin, KUJH TV News. The Spencer Museum of Art opened an exhibit to honor World AIDS Day in collaboration with the Douglas County AIDS Project. KUJH TV's Is At Molly has more. Over 30 million cases of the deadly AIDS disease has been found across different nations today. The epidemic that was first reported in medical reports 30 years ago is still a very big issue. In the United States, one in five people don't even know they carry the disease, and every nine and a half minutes someone new is becoming infected. Tomorrow's World AIDS Day, and a Douglas County AIDS project is working hard with two KU student groups to spread awareness and bury the stigma. We use this day to come together and uh, talk about what are the greatest barriers and so far the greatest barrier to uh, HIV AIDS uh, remains um, the stigma. Despite the disease's track record, United Way and the Douglas County AIDS Project group members stress the importance of finding the disease early on. This treatment, antiretroviral treatment, can save lives but it can also reduce the risks of transmitting the disease by unprecedented 96 percent. The Douglas County AIDS Project will be giving out free HIV testing on campus for students and the Spencer Art Museum will be having an Arts Against AIDS event where visitors can see various artwork from famous artists who have suffered from the disease. Is that Mally KUJH TV News. For a good cause you might want to consider dessert before dinner tonight. KUJH TV's Neam Gambier tells us how a local cupcake business is supporting the fight against domestic violence. By coming into the Cupcake Construction Company tonight from 6 to 8, you can help benefit the Willow Domestic Violence Center by buying a cupcake. The Cupcake Construction Company in downtown Lawrence is holding a benefit event in support of the Willow Domestic Violence Center. A group of KU students contacted the owner of the Cupcake Construction Company, Michael Crixfeld, and organized the benefit event happening later today. Aaron and a couple of students um, in a class are doing a fundraiser and they stopped by asking us if we would be interested in having a donation jar out on our counter. The local cupcake business regularly hosts benefit nights that are dedicated to different organizations around town. Crixfeld gave the group of students the opportunity to host an event instead of putting a donation jar. Student Aaron Berlin, who is also one of the group members for this benefit, explains the process of the donation. 15 to 20 percent of the proceeds from each cupcake sold will go to help the shelter. Student Robin Latham, who is also involved with the benefit tonight, gives her input on how they spread the word for the event. We a Facebook group. We've really taken advantage of social media to try and get all of our friends and family and any students on campus we can possibly get to um, make it to Cupcake Construction tonight. 
The owner and the students involved with the benefit say they hope to see many people tonight and enjoy a cupcake while supporting a good cause. Nam Gambier, KUJH TV News. Coming up after the break, 200 Occupy protesters were arrested early this morning. We'll tell you where. And later, Tyler Amble will be here at the Weather Center to take a look at what we can expect the weather to be like in the coming days. Stay tuned. Welcome back. In national news, one less Occupy protest is taking place today. Hundreds of Los Angeles police officers dismantled tents and arrested more than 200 protesters early this morning. Some 1,400 officers moved in on City Hall lawn just after midnight to clear the site where protesters have been camping the past two months. City officers described the operation as fairly peaceful. Before the raid, Occupy LA was the largest of the nationwide protest movement, which began in New York's Zuccotti Park. Other big city protests are still intact as well as Occupy Lawrence, with protesters remaining active in the town. In international news, central banks around the world are working to give Europe's economy a little bit of a boost. This morning, the Federal Reserve and central banks from England, Japan, Switzerland, and Canada announced a plan to help bail out European banks, beginning this December and until 2013. The plan comes at the height of Europe's debt crisis and works to lower the cost of short-term borrowing for troubled European banks. This year's Cyber Monday shopping reached an all-time high, according to a study released today. U.S. online spending reached almost $1.3 billion last Monday, according to market research, a market research firm uh, Comstock. That's up 22% from last year, which held the previous record. With Monday's boost, online shopping for the month of November surpassed $15 billion. Black Friday sales were also up. But Cyber Monday beat all Black Friday sales by a healthy margin. It's been a little bit colder here recently in Lawrence. Yeah, uh, but today, today's beautiful, though, so who knows true. what's coming up. It's true. Let's go ahead and send it over to Tyler Amble at the Weather Center. You guys hit it right on the head. Today we were actually blessed with a warm afternoon day. Woke up to maybe some chilly skies. Felt a little bit like that December air that's coming in. But for the afternoon today, we got blessed with just a wonderfully warm afternoon because the jet stream, as you can see, just kind of like jumped right over the top of us. But that'll be moving on through as we go throughout. Let's take a look at the satellite image. As you can see, the clouds are on their way in. Up north is actually getting hammered by some snow right now. But right now, we have a terrific afternoon in store for you guys. Let's take a look at that radar to the north. Yeah, there you can see it. The Dakotas, Minnesota, all of those northern states are getting anywhere from two to five inches of snow, and that may come our way later this weekend. We'll take a quick look at, yep, there's tomorrow, the front that will be coming through tomorrow. We will feel those cold winter winds coming on through tomorrow afternoon, and we might even see some precip going towards the weekend, but a quick look, tomorrow's forecast um, those are the high temperatures. We should end up in around the mid 40s. So it'll feel like the very end of November as it begins December time. We'll take a quick look at the five day forecast. There it is. As you can see, today is the best out of all those five days. And come Friday, we got the winter precip coming in. And as you can see, Saturday with the snow, possible freezing rain, that may head our way Saturday night into Sunday morning. But as you see right there, it should be about as typical as we will see. Send it back to you guys. Thanks, Tyler. When we come back, Taylor Williamson will be here to preview tonight's men's basketball game. And he'll also tell us about the latest news involving the recent firing of head football coach, or former head football coach, Turner Gill. We'll be right back. Turner Gill, the head coach, the head coach of the football team, but the men's and women's basketball teams are looking good. Indeed, it has been, David. Let's send it over to Taylor Williamson at the sports desk to check in with what's going on today in the week of Kansas sports. 
Hey guys, well after a heartbreaking loss to Duke in the Maui Invitational Final, the Jayhawks finally returned to the hardwood tonight to face off against the Florida Atlantic Owls. The 14th ranked Hawks enter the game with a 3-2 record with their two losses coming to now number one Kentucky and number four Duke. The Hawks will again look for a big night from Thomas Robinson who was named Big 12 Player of the Week yesterday. Coach Self talked about the Florida Atlantic Owls in his weekly press conference on Monday. They're a good team. Coach Jarvis does a good job. They won the Sun Belt last year, and they're picked to win it again this year. So that'll be a, it'll be a tough game. Tip-off is at 7 o'clock at Allen Fieldhouse, and you can catch the game on 90.7 FM KJHK. The KU men's is not the only squad with, on campus with a big-time player. Carolyn Davis, the junior forward out of Houston, was named by the Atlanta Tip-Off Club to the 2011-2012 Naismith Women's Early Season Watch List. The Naismith Trophy is presented to the women's college basketball player's best player each year. Davis is off to a hot start this year, averaging 19 points and 7.4 rebounds per game. and has led the Jayhawks to a 6-0 record to start the season. The Lady Jayhawks' next game is against the SMU Mustangs tomorrow night at 7 o'clock in Allen Fieldhouse. And even though soccer season is over, the accolades keep coming for the KU women's soccer team. Junior forward Whitney Berry has been named one of the top women's college soccer players by TopDrawerSoccer.com. She checked in at number 97. Berry broke the KU single season assist record this past year. And the KU coaching search continues, but it may be without one of the early favorites. Speculation has been rampant on KU message boards and from local sports pundits that former Texas Tech coach Mike Leach was one of the leading candidates to take over the spot vacated by Turner Gill. That may not be the case now, as multiple news outlets are reporting that Mike Leach has agreed to take over the vacant head coaching position at Washington State. We'll keep you updated on all news regarding the KU head football coaching search. That's all for now. Back to you guys. Thanks, Taylor. In Kansas, it's not deer near the interstate, but for Virginians on Monday, zebras were spotted sauntering alongside a highway. That's right, David. Well, a couple of zebras got loose from a Lushburn Animal Park in Loudoun County, Virginia, after a maintenance man left their gate open. The zebras toured the town for about uh, three hours before the park's vet was able to tranquilize the animals. The zebras were not harmed and are now safely back at home behind closed gates. Well, that's all for your Wednesday newscast. Be sure to check out all the latest on these stories at Kansan.com. We'll be right back here tomorrow at 4 o'clock. Thanks for watching.